Hi guys, this is a tutorial on how to get your pattern pieces or your basic bodice blocks out of physical form and into digital form to be digitized. Um, it's useful to have patterns digitized because uh, you can design from within your computer program, um, grade them up and down for different sizes, or uh, even design from within the program once your basic bodice blocks or your pattern pieces are put in. Um, the people who would probably want to use this are those who probably can't afford uh, programs like Optex, Gerber, or Electra. Those suites, those programs are about sixty thousand um, dollars for a nice, you know, full package with the printer, the program, the keys. Um, not a lot of regular users can afford that. Um, that aren't businesses, so this is a nice uh, alternative to that. Given those computer programs are a lot more simple, but um, if you just can't do it, then uh, this is a good way to go. So <clears throat> once you have a digitized piece, you can uh, grade it. This is a graded piece. Maybe in a future tutorial I'll show you how to grade. This tutorial is just for how to get your pieces digitized. Um, you want to start with a basic bodice block or pattern piece. Uh, if you don't know what a basic bodice block is, this might not be the tutorial for you. Um, you want Illustrator CS5 or a comparable program. I don't know the shortcuts for other versions of Illustrator, but I'm pretty sure it's you can figure it out if they're not already the same. And a camera. Prerequisite is working knowledge of Illustrator and a basic understanding of grading and patterns. Totally not necessary, um, but I think it would be better if you did. Okay. So let's start. We want to get this piece onto the program first. And you do that by taking a picture of your piece. I know this is really crude, but uh, <laughs> I didn't want to spend a lot of time on making really nice diagrams. So you just want to tape your pattern piece to the floor. Sorry if you can hear my fan. I clearly need to upgrade my computer. It bugs me too. Uh, you want to tape your pattern piece to the floor and take a picture exactly perpendicular. So you want your camera looking exactly up and down uh, and you want to get the full pattern piece in so that it will look like this. Um, once you do that, upload it to your computer and then, um, well let me show you how to get the artboard started. Go to File New. We want, I want my artboard to probably be 24 inches wide by maybe 14, 15 inches tall. I'll do 14 for now and see how that works. You can change your artboard once you're in the program, so it's not too important that you get this right. So let's see how that works. Okay. I also want my grid line showing. Show grid. This is, um, like if you were using a, a grading uh, ruler, it's um, you can zoom in and make everything super accurate because it's pretty important that everything's accurate. To make sure that you've got your one inch increments by eight, you can go ahead and go to Guides and Grid. Actually, let me show you that again. Go to Illustrator, Preferences, Guides and Grid, and you want to make sure you have your grid line every one inch with eight subdiv subdivisions. That's just like a flexi ruler that you would use in design school. So it's um, it'll be some pretty familiar territory. So we've got that. Now we want to place our pattern piece. Go to place. Find your piece. Place it. So we got this in here. Um, I want it dim. So double click the layer dim the image by 50% or whatever you like. You don't have to, I just prefer it. Then you want to make a new layer. And you also want to lock this first layer so that you can't interact with it and it can't interact with us yet. Um, another important thing, let's see. Oh yes, I'm using um, the Intuos 4 PTK 440, this one right here. Um, it's, I can't use anything else. When I try to use a mouse now, I'm just really clumsy, so 
it's about 300 bucks. Um, I recommend it if you're going to be doing a lot of this kind of work. You might want to try it first because I hear a lot of people can't get used to it. So we want to go to pen. Hit pen or P. We want no fill. We want um, black outline. And then let's start outlining. We can go ahead and zoom in if we want. We're going to be fixing a lot of the mistakes later. We just want to get this outside copied. Oh no, I can't see it. I'm going to try zooming out. Command Z, or not Command Z, Command uh, minus is zoom out. Um, we'll just go ahead and work with that for now. I'll show you how to correct that in a little bit. It's important that it is corrected though. Go over here. Go over here. Copy all the way around to the notch. We want to copy the notches too. You might want to zoom in. I've been doing this so much I can just do it kind of zoomed out. And then meet back over here. Alright, so let's correct some mistakes here. We've got uh, this area right here is kind of like, whoa, way out there. So you want to hit your direct selection, and then grab your handle, and uh, just kind of finagle it and see if you can get a good, accurate, I think that works right there for now. And then this, I think we want this up a little bit. Maybe fix this arch right here. Try to scoot this over a little bit. See if we can maybe correct that a little more. Put this up a little bit. Zoom out now, command minus, and I think the rest looks okay. So we've got that. Um, let's make the bottom disappear, we can have a better look at this. Okay, so now what we want to do is flip this. Well, you don't have to, I just have a habit of working with the center front closest to me. Like if I were grading by hand, I would... Uh, always work with this straight at this end of the table. So let's go ahead and do that. We can hit O, enter, and I'm going to do 180 because I want it to flip 180. There we go. Now another thing that's important is we want this edge to be straight and we also um, want it to be the same size as my real I measured this on my real piece and it was 14 and 7 eighths which equates to about 14.88 um, in decimal so um, these are one inch grids what I like to do is get the straight line double click and then we can tell it that we want it to be 14.88 inches long and we also want it to be at zero. So you can either manually put it at zero or just hit zero. And OK. So that's 14.78, or I mean 14 and 7 eighths, or 14.88. So you can kind of just double check that. 3, 6, 9, 12, 13, 14. So um, I like to also keep it even. What is that guy? I'm going to get rid of that guy. Not necessary. Alright, so we want to hit this guy. Put it right on the inch mark. Um, 
and then this guy we're going to match up. We're going we're to clearly we are going to be shrinking this guy down. So we just go ahead and select them with uh, the selection tool, not direct select, the regular selection. Hold shift and let's just scale this down. You can see it kind of shrinking down. Now we want to make sure we're going to be doing it. If you know a better way to do this, you can let me know. Uh, this is the way I figured out, and I know there's probably an easier way out there. Oops, I also forgot that we want to level this out as well. We want it to be straight. So you can do that by you select your piece, hit O. I like to just hit the corner right there, and then we want to balance it out right here, right on the line. that should work. We can zoom in here see if it's even. So we got that. Oops. Let me zoom out. And zoom in. So we are about a little less than a half an eighth off. Um, so we can go ahead and finagle that a little more. Shift, just barely. Hopefully that's good. Now we can go in. Make sure over here is even. Okay, that's even. Let me make over here is even. So it looks like you can just go a little bit more. Ah, sorry about that. Go ahead and select this guy. Just barely. Yeah, good enough. Um, so now that we got our pieces in, everything's um, measured up right. Let's edit our artboard because it seems like it's a little too big. Edit artboards. Um, this is good when you're printing because uh, you want it kind of as small as possible to save paper. Oh, also, there's a few ways to print. You can print at home on a regular printer and um, tape your pieces together. It's kind of tedious. Um, oops. Or if you own a large format printer, you can print on that. Um, you can get a used one on Craigslist for a couple hundred bucks or brand new for maybe a couple thousand. Um, nice to have if you plan on doing a lot of this. So we got our artboard now. We can go ahead and get rid of that line. Here's a little tip. You can hit um, where your eyedropper is. You can hit the measure tool. Click right on the edge and you can go to the other edge. It should be about 4.88 and you can see in the upper right hand corner 4.8712 so it's about 4.88. Uh, it's pretty right on. Now we want to label this. Get your text, your texture, T. Um, we want to make this probably 24 point. It sounds big, but you have to remember that this is a big sheet of paper. If it were in uh, physically in front of you, we've got, you know, it's uh, probably like 15, 16 by 12 or something. So um, what normally seems like would be large is rather small. So you put your style number, whatever that may be. If you work for a company, then you know how you do your style numbers. People do them differently. Um, sometimes they do them by season, uh, male, female, child, and then uh, whether it's dress, skirt, short. I'm just going to put the date in for now. That's not how you properly label a pattern, but just for this sake, I will. And then you want to label it front, bodice, block. Um, actually, you know what I do. I put the bodice block basic bodice block and then next is which piece it's front next is how many you cut C 
cut to sell. There is a science to this. Um, it's, I'm only putting cuts to self because I'm assuming that there is a seam line down the middle. Um, normally a factory, a factory piece would be like this guy. It would be fully open. Uh, a lot of home sewers work with half pieces and cut them on the fold. Uh, they do it different in factories to save time and money. Uh, let's, let's go back to that guy. Where are you? It's the original one. It's the large format printer. Okay, cut to self. Uh, this is a size six. And then the date. And then I like to put the company name as well. I um, work with a lot of clients. This is how I organize their master patterns. Um, I like to pick Helvetica. This isn't necessary. You can pick whatever you want. Helvetica, and I like it bold. And then I like to shrink the text box down. Then um, we can go ahead and group it. Command G, or go up to Object Group. Let me show you that again. Object Group. Um, or Command G. And then uh, I want to erase this layer. So we just unlock it and get rid of it. Yes, I want to delete that. So there we have it. We have our digitized basic block. Um, you would do this with all your pattern pieces within a block. And then from there, you're ready to start designing um, or even grading, which this is an example of the same piece I just did um, graded for a factory. Grading is a whole other can of worms. If you'd like, I can do a tutorial on how to grade on Illustrator. Um, it's good that you have a basic understanding of grading, or else you're just going to be totally confused. Um, I don't know if I forgot a couple things. Uh, this is your grading ruler. If you grade by hand, it's a nice thing to have. Um, you got your picture, the basic bodice block. Uh, this is a large format printer that you can get um, from Craigslist, used for pretty cheap. Um, once you have your pattern piece done, you can either print it on a large format printer, or you can go to a printing chain such as Kinko's or FedEx, UPS, or another um, print store and have it done there. Or you can do it on a regular printer and tape your pieces together. Um, I can do a tutorial on printing as well. Um, so that's about it for this one. Uh, if you have any questions, just go ahead and put them down there. It's my first tutorial, so if it kind of sucked, it's okay to let me know. Uh, I can redo it and make it better.